Thank you for the kind introduction, Laura, and thank you to all the attendees that are listening today. I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation where I'll present some tips on how to extract the maximum amount of information from a Raman system with a technology called terahertz Raman. So my first tip is don't throw away your best signals. It might seem kind of obvious, but actually most Raman systems only collect the chemical fingerprint region from 200 to about 2000 wave numbers. This is great for chemical identification, but it makes it difficult to detect some subtle differences like changes in form or crystallinity for many materials. With terahertz Raman systems, we actually extend the range of low frequency Raman, of Raman to the low frequency region down to about five wave numbers for both Stokes and anti-Stokes. This gives you up to 10x stronger signals that can be found in the low frequency region and allows you access to molecular and intermolecular vibrations that are more sensitive to structural differences in the material. This means that the low frequency portion of the Raman spectrum that's typically thrown away in a conventional Raman system is actually more sensitive to changes in form or phase. Plus, the higher signal strength that can be present there means that you have a much larger signal to noise ratio, and that can enable higher mapping speeds, uh, lower uh, excitation power from the laser means lower chance for damaging the materials and faster data visualization for an analysis of the results. This can be really crucial for applications such as high throughput screening. One of the key advantages of low frequency Raman is the, the ability to, to see these different structural changes in the materials. This structural fingerprint, as we call it, down below 200 wave numbers is actually fundamentally different than what you'd find in a traditional chemical fingerprint region because you're looking at vibrations of the entire molecule or crystal lattice modes. Plus, these bands tend to be much, much stronger than the, than the conventional fingerprint regions that you'd find. This can be up to 10x stronger. Um, the These Brahman shifts down below 200 wave numbers actually correspond to terahertz level vibrational energy states. Five wave numbers cor corresponds to 150 gigahertz, and 200 wave numbers corresponds to six terahertz. So this low frequency region of the Raman spectrum actually is the range of an entire, the entire range of a terahertz absorption spectrometer, just with a Raman capability instead. That's why we call it terahertz Raman. You're combining a terahertz system with a traditional Raman system in all in one unit. This enables you to have complete, rapid, in-situ, non-destructive testing from a single measurement. My second tip for you is that it's actually very easy to upgrade your existing systems to en enable terahertz Raman. We have, or while the technology itself is required to produce the vibrant signals is complex, we've made it easy to integrate with our modular terahertz Raman systems that incorporate a laser and all the necessary filtering into a plug and play device with a simple fiber optic cable connection. If you don't already have the Raman spectrometer or are looking to add a dedicated system capability for terahertz Raman, we have many complete system solutions available to meet your needs as well. From our module plus spectrometer bundles to our well plate systems that's designed for high throughput screening, we have solutions that can meet virtually any need. The modular systems themselves are all actually very similar to each other. You can see three different versions we offer here, the TR Bench, the TR Pro Micro, and the TR Pro. What they have in common is that they are all combine a stable wavelength laser that is chosen to, to meet your specific application needs and include all the internal filters required to precisely block only the Rayleigh scattered light and extract all of the Raman signals, both Stokes and anti-Stokes, they're then coupled into an optical fiber for connection to virtually any spectrometer. The TR Bench integrates everything into a single box with a versatile dovetail flange for easy connect and disconnect to our, of our various uh, sample interface accessories. The TR Micro adds more internal optics to align the beam to the optical axis of any standard microscope. All Raman signals are returned to the system, but shorter wavelengths are transmitted through to a CCD camera or eyepiece that can be placed above the system. 
An integrated selector switch allows the, the optics to be removed from the beam path and not interfere with any other instruments that may be present on the microscope. The TR probe is the most versatile configuration of all, where the filter head is actually separated from the laser box to fit into more compact spaces. The probe head is completely passive in design with no electrical connections for, for use in a broad range of operating temperatures and environments, and has the same dovetail flange as the TR bench. The TR probe has the most sample accessory options, which we'll see coming up, making it the workhorse of the product line. So how easy is it to incorporate terahertz Raman into an existing system? Well, step one, you disconnect the existing fiber from the spectrometer. Step two, connect the collection fiber from the terahertz Raman system to the spectrometer. And step three, collect data using the spectrometer software as you normally would. It's really that simple. My third tip is that the right accessory is really what's key to determining how, you're, how much information you're able to get from a, a Raman system. While uh, we have spent a lot of time and effort producing many different sam uh, interchangeable sam sample interface accessories to make these terahertz Raman modules even more versatile and powerful, the same tool can be used to measure standard HPLC or scintillation vials or tablets, monitor reactions in real time by a direct immersion or through a transparent window, measure both backscatter and transmission Raman, or mount the entire system onto a microscope for micro Raman measurements. If you need to have a larger illumination area, we also have an additional adapter that can be connected to almost any of these uh, sample accessories and increase the spot size by orders of magnitude. This universal dovetail flange that is common to all systems ensures compatibility with any new or existing accessories that may be generated for in the future. Tip number four is that you can get more information for virtually any application by incorporating terahertz Raman. These are just some of the many applications that have already been demonstrated with terahertz Raman. The common element to all of these is the desire to learn more about the structural properties of the materials and how they can change from polymorphs to structural integrity and defects, electrical properties, quality assurance, or even forensic analysis. Terahertz Raman can add vital information for a more complete understanding of materials and more efficient process development. So remember, any application that's concerned about structural properties of materials and how they might change could take advantage of terahertz Raman capability. One of the key applications is for looking at different polymorphic forms of materials. In this case, we're showing three different examples of pharmaceutical drugs, indomethacin, paracetamol, and provocol. The same system collects both the, terahertz, the conventional uh, chemical fingerprint region plus the low frequency regions, and you see it all shown here by, for comparison. Notice how much stronger the low frequency region signals are compared to the chemical fingerprint region. That makes a big difference for getting faster response in analyzing these different materials. But if we take a closer look at the low frequency portion of the spectrum, this terahertz Raman spectrum shows the real strength of this, this measurement uh, modality where you can easily see by eye the differences between different polymorphic forms based on the appearance of the, 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 the signals down in this low-frequency region. Whether it's strong, sharp peaks like you'd find in the, the gamma form of indomethacin or a broader, uh, more subdued peaks from the, the alpha form, this actually tells you a lot about the material. And for even subtle changes like the difference between form 1 and form 2 of probocol, you can clearly see the differences in this low-frequency region. But it's not just for use in, uh, in analyzing what the polymorphic form is. The strong signal strengths that are come with the, uh, the, the terahertz Raman signal and systems make it easy to identify polymorphic transformations real time in situ. In this case, we've simulated a dynamic process measurement by heating a commercial Advil tablet to a high temperature where it passes through a polymorphic transformation and then allowed it to cool 
at room temperature while monitoring the terahertz Raman spectrum. You can easily see that during this transition, the, the, the form of the material changed state between after about 15 minutes. And if we plot the individual spectra, you can be able to observe the effect on the, 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 the low frequency region of the spectrum very easily in this, in this environment. Other applications would be for looking at co-crystal formation. In general, anytime the structural form changes by the formation of a co-crystalline bond, for example, or breaking of a co-crystalline bond, you will see a corresponding change in the spectrum of the, the, the low frequency region. Whenever you add complexity to the molecule, you will tend to increase the number of low frequency bands, and they tend to move closer to the, the laser line. In this case, the red curve shows a mixture of caffeine and 2-benzoic acid, but it's just physically mixed together, where the blue curve shows what happens when you see that co-crystalline bond form between the two. So it makes it very easy to identify the, when you actually are producing the reaction that you're looking for in uh, setting up your, your, your scenario. One of the best examples is looking at, uh, at phase monitoring. So in this case, we've looked at sulfur, where again, we've heated the sulfur from room temperature up through its transition state, going from uh, orthorhombic at room temperature to a monoclinic state, and then finally it melted uh, as you get up above 110 degrees C. And that's where you get the, uh, the, the gamma form. If you were to only look at the signals up above about 150 wave numbers, they all look identical. But you can see the dramatic difference in structural form being present in this low frequency region down below 100 wave numbers in this case. The red monoclinic uh, form actually has less signal or less, less uh, uh, structure to it than the, the blue alpha form. But it is still easily distinguished from the gamma form, in indicating that it does still have some reduced level of short range order compared to the, the, the alpha, the highly crystalline alpha form. So just by looking at the low frequency region of the spectrum, you're able to learn a lot about what the properties of the material are in its different phase that can be produced. Another example would be to look at uh, polymer materials. Polymers are very important uh, for, their, for understanding their structural properties because they can directly affect the performance of the polymer. High density polyethylene, for example, is used in many common applications from plastic bags to bottles and pipes and housing wrap. And if you were to look at you know, different examples with different uh, lamellar structures to it, uh, you would be able to see that the chemical fingerprint region looks almost identical, but the low frequency range in this case looks completely different. So that makes terahertz Raman ideal for understanding the physical properties of polymers and how they could be used in different applications. I mentioned earlier about the uh, TR probe being able to, to mount to a microscope with a, a microscope adapter. And here's a perfect example showing that case. So it is mounted onto a thermo DXR Raman microscope. The connection is the, the, the microscope adapter connection is permanently connected to the microscope, allowing you to easily connect the probe head to the, the microscope adapter and remove it on, on desire. The output port uh, has, a, a, has a, an integrated optical switch that allows you to remove the, the, the optics from the microscope beam path and engage a side port that connect uh, some of the other accessories to when the probe is not in microscope optical path. So this makes it very, very versatile and advantageous to, to operate. So if we look at some of the applications coming out of this, one of this possibly could be looking at 2D materials. In this case, we've got the example of molybdenum diselenide, where you can have two layers of the, the multi-layer stack uh, placed one on top of the other, either directly uh, uh, common with it, with, and, and concentric with the, the, the layer below, or rotated by 60 degrees. Now, in this case, the, when you have that rotated uh, rotation of the layer, you're able to identify the difference based on the appearance of a band at about 18 wave numbers. The signal strength of that band is massively larger for the, the rotated case than the concentric case, and there's a slight shift in the positioning of the band. 
making this very, very sensitive to looking at um, defects in these 2D materials that can be very difficult to detect in any other way. And tip number five is that you can use terahertz Raman to accelerate screening and mapping. For example, we have uh, our TRWPS system available for high throughput screening applications with well plates. It is a fully automated system that is completely turnkey and incorporates a full terahertz Raman module with a spectrometer, inverted microscope, polarized light imaging, translation stages, and intuitive software for data collection and analysis. It can accept all standard well plate formats as well as custom sub substrates that enable high resolution mapping of tablets. This makes it very easy to use for rapid analysis and process, process development in many applications that require high throughput screening. One example showing this is mapping of an Excedrin tablet. You can easily be able to rapidly collect uh, data over a, a fairly large range of the, the Excedrin tablet, do chemometric analysis, and then visualize the results. So you can see here, how we've been able to do principal component analysis and clustering to identify the three principal compounds within the Excedrin tablet, aspirin shown in red, acetaminophen shown in blue, and caffeine in purple, and how they are physically distributed across the tablet. By incorporating this tablet map with the underlying uh, polarized light microscope image, you're able to then gain a better, a better feeling of which compounds are located where within the visual image and be able to learn that much more about how the, 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 the Raman map uh, can interact and identify specific areas of interest that you might want to learn a little bit more information about. My last tip is to take advantage and ask the experts on terahertz Raman. At Coherent, we have been producing these terahertz Raman systems and for, for many years now, uh, since about 2012 to 2013, making us the leaders in this entire space. You can just simply contact us and tell us about your current and or desired applications and what equipment you might already have, from what spectrometer make and model you have, the wavelengths you might need for your sample, uh, which microscope make and model you might have, or any other special requirements, and take advantage of our knowledge about how you how similar customers may have impl implemented these uh, these different uh, applications and products into their their measurements. So, let us know what sample types you might need to measure, whether it's samples in vials or bulk samples, microscope. Uh, anything like this, and we'll be able to select this correct configuration of both equipment and uh, sample accessories that will meet your needs and provide you the fastest way to an easy upgrade of your Raman capability or a new capability for analytical measurement within your experiment. So to summarize, I'd like to make sure that everyone understands the Terahertz Raman gives you some critical information about the structural properties of materials that can be very, very vital for many different applications where structural form changes can be present, whether it's looking at different polymorphs, changes in crystallinity, phase, or hydration, or other special uh, structural attributes of the material. These systems, we have many different systems available to offer flexible solutions that can match any sample or application. And you can easily learn more at our website or go straight to, to the appropriate section of the coherent page by going to www.terahertz-raman.com for more information. And please contact your local coherent sales representative for more details. Uh, we're eagerly waiting to, to speak with you. Thank you.